I used to do this uh, little game board, a little plastic board had about five holes in it and rows of holes and all these little pegs, colored pegs, almost like the color, you could use it for that wordless book because there was red, there was white, there was black, there was yellow, green, you know. So you have these pegs and uh, someone behind this little shield lines up these different color pegs. Mastermind was the game. And you had to start over here, and you didn't see what this, uh, your opponent had put down. And you had to guess the right color in the right row. How are you going to do that? Well, I don't know where I'm going with this, but it just has to do with, in the reading through the details of, of how the game is played, they said the chances of getting it like on the first guess <laughs> is like one to something other permutations. I went, what is that word? <laughs> but but it it's just describing, uh, I guess, the odds at getting it right. And you, you try and go through and th they gauge one. If you get a color right, but it's in the wrong row, you get a white peg over here on the sidebar. And if you got one all the way right, it's, it's the, let's say, the red, and it's in the right row, you get a black peg. So black and white pegs mark what you're doing. And so, not to fully describe the game, but the odds of getting that, it helps you get to the end. Well, whatever God is doing in our life is much more than a game. It is in the realm of the miraculous. And, but the odds of all these things happening to bring us to today, and everybody has the same word. It's like getting it right on the first <laughs> on the first row of that game board. A million, more than a million to one. So, is God watching, listening, concerned, and intimately involved in everything? I mean, when you were hurting this morning, when you had trouble getting out of bed, like so, when you, when, uh, whew, wow, <laughs> you know, Happy in Jesus, but oh, I'm feeling it. You know, if there's there's any of that going on, he knows the good, the bad, and yeah, sometimes even, well, we won't go there. <laughs> because when I look in the mirror, it's a little, probably like you too. It's like, oh, we got some work to do here. <laughs> and, and then we start our day. But you know, God is, he wants to be very intimate with us. He's very loving. I'm, I'm thankful for that. Uh, he's got a lot to put up with, with me and all of us. But But in this, we, we saw what unity and that flowing together has accomplished. So we're not looking for first-hand results right here. What, what happened was, was this unity. Now, there were bumps in the beginning and coordinating stuff, but I saw how people talked and worked together and managed and, and kept, you know, just being knit together in love, which is part of how that unity works. Ephesians talks about this, and this is part of the word, and this is about unity. But the title of my message is, Then They Will Know. We want people to know. But Jesus, in one of his last prayers and discourses, right before the cross, has a little part in John 17 where he does say, Then They Will Know. Well, well what? Well, People have a lot of questions. People had questions then. Did the, did the disciples have questions? When, you're, when are you... When, when's the kingdom going to come? You know, they had this question. They would look at him and say, so when, when's this all going to happen? When you, we're gonna, you're going to take charge and we're just going to... Oh, you know, no. And... Or then, when's he coming back? When he left. <laughs> oh, there you, And... They had questions about prayer. So they said, the Lord, teach us to pray. Always questions. And we have questions. People that came there had questions to, to the event. People driving by right now and people all, uh, some people are contemplating suicide this morning. More than ever before in the history of mankind. People are questioning their very purpose in life, their existence, their, what's the meaning of all this? What value do I have? Do I have value to anyone? Some people feel you know, left out, sideline, there, there's any number, the enemy does not pick and choose, he just, he just wants the whole uh, bag of marbles and go with it. He, uh, 
So, but we are trained and we're equipped in the love of God and through the word of God because we're born of his spirit. We're, we're one with him and that unity, and this is what Jesus prayed, that they would know, that we would know that it's Jesus in him, meaning God the Father, and the Father in him. And that that same unity would, would be known among us. Yes. And that, that by this unity, then the world will know. Amen. There's a lot of uncertainty. It doesn't matter if you're poor, you're rich, you're educated, you're, you're uneducated. Across the globe, people are having questions, just basic human questions. Who am I? Who am I? You know, I'm, I'm here, but who am I? What? So, it's, most of you know the answers to all these now because you found redemption through Jesus Christ. And a lot of these, this, these issues have been resolved inside. But, I don't know about you, but after talking to a lot of people yesterday, didn't you feel the, those places that, where there are questions, they don't know, they're lost, they don't, they, you know, they're just in existence mode. I mean, they smiled, they had a good time, they were very thankful. I think everybody, it was just a very, very, there were no hiccups to me. I mean, it was just, no one got upset or this or that. Or, and, uh, you know, we saved back some painting, or some pumpkins that got painted in case they came today, you know, pick them up. So, but they have a God-sized hole in their heart. And so part of that wordless book uh, story illustration with uh, the Christian uh, group that came. What was their name again? Christian Education. Child Evangelism Fellowship. Yeah, really? wonderful group, and we will send them a thank you and a little something. But uh, Savannah did a great job, and kids were attentive and sat around. And I think we kind of primed the pump for them because uh, doing the pumpkins and the, and the scarecrow, different things. I don't know if the scarecrows necessarily had the the color thing the pumpkins, the pumpkins. oh and the bracelets had a few yeah yeah oh yeah I just jumped right on it you know and just saying hey do you know why we, why we have these uh, or one time I said I'll bet you're wondering why we're using these colors well you know <laughs> were they thinking that no <laughs> No, but that's my icebreaker. That's how I do it. I said, I'll bet you're wondering about... I mean, if someone was real honest, I'd go, what are you talking about? I mean, you know, or something, you know. I said, well, well, just let me tell you this. I mean, you just got to go in like this, you know, just, just like a bull in a china shop and go ahead and let some of the glass break because it needs to be, or whatever. I mean, just get in there. Not, not to be abusive with anyone, but engaging, I guess, and, and welcoming and warming. You know what? People do like to talk. Now, if I tied my hands behind my back, I'd probably go, because <laughs> I wave my hands all the time. So my wife or others would tell me to. But, but what I'm saying is people do love to communicate. They love to sit down. Uh, those of you that played the games and stuff, I mean, the kids were laughing and running. I don't know how many activities we had, we, but it was just right, wasn't it? I mean, it's just right. And uh, I just loved it. So I did want to include something, and I, we can take time for this, but uh, how you were touched or what you noticed or some special thing uh, that happened either in you or maybe because of you or something that was just of interest, of note, kind of like a testimonial thing uh, from your time there yesterday. Anybody have a comment? You can just share that. I don't know. Get, grab a mic there for everybody and just take about five or ten just a few minutes here because it's it's important uh it's important that the redeemed of the lord says so and this isn't we're saying that we're redeemed but we're we're acknowledging god in what he's doing in us collectively in our unity but also in uh you know this love for one another some young child said well i know what that means i'm one and you're another. So we can love one another. <laughs> I thought, oh, that's, that's a keeper. 
That's good. Ch a child will lead them. So anyway, if you've got a comment, something you want to share, uh, hopefully I gave you enough time, like 30 seconds to think about it. <laughs> Not very long. Gay had something. Yeah, come right. It's pretty cool. This will be real quick. Um, but um, one of the teachers that I work with at Lanfear came yesterday with her husband and her three grandsons. Yes. They're little kids, wow. but I just, I, yeah. they were here the entire time. The, oh. And they, they played the games, they did the crafts. Uh, they even listened to Savannah give her a little spiel about the gospel. So, and they did the hay rack ride. So mm -hmm. they, they did just about everything. And I was just so impressed with that. And, yeah. you know, it's like, it just makes me feel good to know that this woman I've only known since August, because that's when I started the job at Lanphier and started working with her. And, um, I mean, I'm with her half a day every day. So it's like we've gotten to know each other, and I know about her grandkids and all that. So I got to meet them, and they're the sweetest little guys. Yes, so anyway, I, I, like I said, I'm just really thankful for mm -hmm. just them being at the event yesterday, and it just really blessed me and blessed them, and so yeah. it was really cool. Yeah, that's great. Pastor Mark, and her. anybody else have a quick comment? Oh, over here. Carol? Yeah. This is every joint supplying, and that's what it was yesterday. <laughs> well, I really appreciated two things. The first thing was when uh, Savannah was doing with the children, they were so attentive. Yes. And raising their hands to that's answer true. the questions and a eager yeah. to really uh, to, uh, ask questions and uh, comment. And the second thing was a hayride. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That that was something, <laughs> and yes, and I love the way that on, on ours anyway, all the people just started interacting and talking back and forth. Uh, you know, we got to really know them even better on the hayride. Yeah. So that was really cool. That's true. Yes. Yeah, I'm glad you pointed that out. That that happened. Something which not all just. Do. I've, yeah. I've got to go, right, go right ahead. Just put a little mud with it and a little brick. No, but. Uh, <laughs> I tell you, here's what really touched me is that I had three men that I met come up to me at different times towards the end. And here's what they said. They said, we want to thank you all for making this available for our grandchildren oh, that my. we could come. Wow. And mm. the one gentleman, his name is Chad. He lives right across the street. He's the one that was saying, can I help with the put the straw up? And, and, and he was just so, like, soaking it all up, you know. And so at the, we never know, you know. We, we have, you know, we have to reach out, you know. And those, these times like that just gives you an opportunity to mm -hmm. just step on out and, and make yourself friendly, you know. And it's not about all how much what we say, but just be friendly with people. And, right. and, and I saw that, and, and I believe some of them are going to come back. Oh, I, I, I really believe Chad yeah. and his family and some other people yeah. are going to come, and it won't be long. You're right. So thank right. God for, but thank God for everybody that did everything. I mean, oh. it, was, it, was, it was powerful. It was. It was powerful. For it me. was. Yeah. Awesome time. Yeah, yeah, brother, come up. Yeah, I had a good time yesterday teaching them three kids how to fish. Oh, um, yeah. One was Matthew. I said, you, you know, that's the first book of the Bible, and I was one of the first disciples of Jesus Christ. You know, I was talking to him about the Lord and everything. And he said, yeah, I know Jesus. Said, yeah, it's, he's, a, he's the author and finisher of our faith. You know, I was talking to him. When we caught that first fish, well, his eyes lit up. Like that. He got the big old smile on his face, you know. Oh, and then later on, I think I caught its twin. <laughs> but, you know, I had a good time with the kids, you know, yeah. teach them how to fish. I just, I just loved being with the kids, you know. Oh, and then I asked him, you know, if, about his mom and dad. You know, maybe they, if, you know, they invite them, you know, if they wanted to come to church. Mm -hmm. so. That's great, brother. You know, uh, and I think I said it to Pastor Mark, maybe a couple other gentlemen or somebody that... Uh, not now, but toward the springtime. And I've seen people do this, and John knows what I'm going to say because I, I think I brought it up to you. He said there's a whole ministry that started in a church, a fishing ministry. Oh, wow. And we've done a fishing derby up in Lincoln before uh, in honor of a young man that used to be in the church, and he died real young, like he wasn't even 30 or maybe about 30. 
and he had some funny thing with uh, in his aorta or someplace near the heart, and it just it just ruptured, and he was gone just like that. Young man, he was an already a, as a young man an alderman in the city, and there's a memorial to him uh, near the depot, there a marker or stone. But uh, so his parents set up this uh, Nathan Turner annual fishing derby memorial or something because he loved to fish this young guy and so every year they go out to this this lake and they have this huge fishing derby and it's just a a chance to kind of go fishing for men and and young men Uh, uh, then we're gonna do a Christmas tea with the ladies have something coming up not to just do busy work but but to to do the Lord's business and that's part of that occupy till I come, do business till I come. And part of all these things are also, see all these things were blessed to be a blessing, you know, all those messages, and then about how this circling is, you know, we're, we're ascending, we're not just <laughs> going in circles with all this, we're, we're going somewhere, and, and that is increasing our effectiveness. And that takes some time, but, but we're about the Lord's work, and in doing this, Hello, we're back to where we started today. He's including us in the miraculous. He's, he's joining us together so that we'll see, wow, how do all these people get fed? Well, you were out there passing it out. <laughs> you know, you were. And uh, we're going to have 12 baskets full left over. We're going to be blessed by our unity. And this John 17, us working together with our, not just unity for, you know, people can have a unity and they cry for unity and they get together organizations, people like social organizations, so they can meet together and hubbub, whatever. This is a unity on a whole different level. There are even Christian, we'll say supposed Christian groups or um, people who, in like an ecumenical sense of unity, uh, join together really for maybe even ulterior purposes for their own gain or for their own end. We're not talking about any of that. We're just talking about the kingdom. Let his kingdom come and let his will be done. And if we're good to go with that, it's an all in, you know, because what happens is in, in all of that is we're seeing others blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. And I guarantee you there's at least one person sitting here, and maybe even when Pastor Mark mentioned uh, breaking ground and doing all this other stuff, I'll, now I'm just going to go out on one here, but I'll bet there's maybe more than one that thought, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, like, how are we going to do that? <laughs> how's, how's uh, like, well, I'll have to work 60 hours a week. <laughs> I mean, doing this, and then plus, no. Maybe no one's thinking that, but you know what happens? Is as we grow, other people get plugged in, we train them, we raise them up, and, and there, there's, in the kingdom, there's all this stuff gets done. I was blessed that when we got done with the event last night, I saw men, women, and a few young people. I mean, everybody found a spot with doing this, uh, stacking those chairs, Hauling them, you know, get, moving the bales, doing. Everybody was just, you know, like like little worker bees here and there and everywhere, covering all the bases, getting stuff moved in. Yeah, it didn't happen in five minutes. It took about an hour <laughs> or so, but we covered the bases, and that was part of it. I, I guess, hopefully, you can understand. I'm overjoyed at what I saw. <laughs> I, I, I that's I could have said it. At the beginning, but it needed the details, okay? I think you appreciate the details. I, I just like, this is so good. And it's not so good because of just who came, but to see you doing what you do. Amen. That's what brought a great joy. You know, it just was really, really good. And, of course, the people coming and all of us thought, well, I wonder who will come. I wonder if anybody will come. I'm think, we're, we're, we've been praying, we're, you know... And there was one time, and we were all kind of had our heads down and moving here and there and talking to people. And I don't know about you, but it was a while before I noticed my daughter walked up. She wasn't there at the beginning. I don't know when she came, 4.30 or so, with my granddaughter. And when I recognized that's who was standing next to me, I said, oh, hi, hon. And I grabbed her, and I looked up, 
and I saw those rows of cars going almost out to the street. <laughs> and I went, and I welled up, and I teared up, and I said, oh, my gosh. I said, it's kind of catching me off guard here. I said, look, look at all these cars. Look at all, and I looked around because I'd been in, in a group here or a group there or fishing out hot dogs and, you know, Neffert's going back. We're getting, we got low on hot dogs. We had to cook more hot dogs. That's a good sign. Yeah. Round two of hot dogs. I mean, that thing was about full. And we went through them, and it had to do half again, whatever. I'm sure we had over 100 people there. I'm going to believe for 120, like in the upper room. And there could have been more. I might be short because people kind of came and went. And, but, uh, you know, and as Gay said, some people stayed two, almost three hours. Now, a family with kids, I mean, you know, an hour can be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but two hours, but it, it speaks of they felt comfortable with us. They felt at ease. And we weren't preaching, but we were preaching and teaching. I mean, listen to what testimonies we've been listening to. That's part of the unity. And you know how the unity comes? It comes from him, but the unity releases something. It releases something. It's like the Psalms 133. As... The oil that was poured on Aaron's beard, uh, head, and ran down his beard. That, that's the effect of this unity. It, it soothes, and it was soothing to people. It, it was like medicinal. The, the anointing, uh, is fluid, and we were fluid. Well, we had to be fluid, didn't we? <laughs> but, but it caused us to work together, and that working together, I call it joint juice, and you can go buy it. I guess there's products called joint juice, right, and others. But you know where I'm going with that. There's things that you can get on the market, supplemental things that are to help you in arthritic conditions. Occasionally I take that, and when I start feeling it, I'll have to, you know, do more of that. But, you know, Ephesians talks about that which every joint supplies. And the bones... In the body of Christ, they, they meet at where? At the joint. And it's in our union where these things are supplied. By that which every bone supplies? No. That which every joint supplies. Not you by yourself, but you with me. Her with him. She with... Who, you know. It's, it's where we meet... So, yeah, sometimes iron sharpens iron, but it's where every joint supplies so that there's edification, building up of the body in Christ till we all come into the unity of the faith. So that's what, if you want to know what God's doing, is that, then, and back to peg one, then the world will know. They see that going on. Yes. It'll take them a little bit, but they'll go, you know what? God's real. Well, how do you know? Well, I just know. And they'll talk. I did that before I became a Christian. I'd hear people talk at a college campus, at Eastern Illinois University, back in 72. And I'd hear other Christians talk, and I'd see, I'd listen in here and there and go, well, what about, what about, and like anyone else. And I'd see them talk and work, whatever. And then they'd, someone else would get in an argument with them and try and challenge them on something. And I'd find myself going over, I'd say, you need to listen to him. <laughs> me and the Christian, you know, what he's telling you is right. Well, what was happening was that that they were doing from their union and their working together in the body of Christ was supplying, you know, I was getting it. I was getting it. And you know what? Whew. They happened where, and it happens to all of us the same way. We recognize that we're accountable and and. And I felt like I was a million light years from God, but conviction will hit. Don't ever think that if you left people feeling convicted, that's bad. Because there needs to be that initial, yes. I, I'm guilty. If it's just a sloppy, easy grace, like just, just come to Jesus, a topical thing, well, just come and you know, in the beginning, we not only confess Christ, we confess that we need him. If there's, if there's not that, and, and 
But you understand that, I'm sure. Uh, but, but it's a good thing that we recognize that as every joint is supplying for the increase of the body, it draws people in because they see where there is something different. And, and they saw something different. And I don't know about you, but I uh, had people come and say, so what do you teach? What do you do? What do you believe? What, uh, what's happening there? Did some of you have encounters like that where people ask a few questions? I sure did. And uh, somebody asked about the church ministry, uh, said, well, you have different pastors, it sounds like. And I said, yes. Uh, one pastor... Rachel over music ministry and leads that. Oh, oh, oh. Well, why are they asking questions? <laughs> because, you know, it's like, I like what I'm seeing. I like what I'm hearing. So I'm just underscoring the fact that, boy, are we on the same page, literally. <laughs> it's right now. And we have uh, this scripture, and I'll give you the reference here, and I think I gave it. Uh, back there to Dave from John 17 and it's the 20th through the 23rd verse I got a bunch of stuff on the wordless book here I was going to share but if if it fit but it, it doesn't have to at this time Beginning, I'm just going to go to 4 and verse 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling to which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And look about the unity. He goes to verse 4. There is one body. There's only one. One body, one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. That's shouting ground right there. He's above all, but he who is above all is in you, and he must be from Georgia or somewhere, and he's in you all. <laughs> or from somewhere down south, he's in you all. Yes, he's in you. In you. That's what he is. He's in you. <laughs> I mean, I, I get little tweets, not tweets because I don't do, but a uh, little, little text or something and someone, well, I have an aunt from Kentucky. So that's where I heard it recently. And she, she left me a message. Oh, man. And it was just thick. <laughs> it was thick. I thought, oh, Donna, Donna. It's my, my elderly aunt. And she just, she used to be from here in central Illinois. Boy, she's gone south. And it's so it's my comical way of when I read this, I go, he's above all, through all, and in y'all. <laughs> Pastor Mark and I were kidding each other yesterday. I said, I can't go too far, too many sentences before. There's, there's something funny there somewhere. It just crops up. I, I, and people say, well, how do you come up with that stuff? Where does that come from? You just pull them out of the air. I said, I'm just listening. I just, listen. I just, I'm just, what did I just do? And a lot of times I just repeat back to someone what they just told me and they bust out all over. I said, isn't that what you just said? And they just, so some, and like reading this, you read it, well, that's what Paul said. And so here we are. Okay. But to each one, even though we're unified, we're the same and we're all different. How does God do that? Well, you know, like the snowflakes and everything else. Uh, but to each one, each one is given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he said, when he sent it on high, led captivity captive. He gave gifts unto men. He gave, let's skip down to 11. And he gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So those who do the work of the ministry are who? There you go. John's doing, he's doing the circle thing. <laughs> I love it. All of us. All of us, and I didn't catch that in the beginning either, but it, it's true. There are ministries that help us do that to get us all plugged in, and that's kind of my job and a few others. And, but, 
But, you know, we, when it came to time to clean up, we're all doing the same stuff out there. We're all working together. And because we're all being equipped and we're all coming because of that into the unity of the faith, and it's going to keep happening, it's for the work of the ministry, for the edifying, building up of the body of Christ, Till we all come to unity of the faith. Some people say it does. the body of Christ does not look very unified right now. Even among certain groups that they've got a name here, they can't even get along, let alone that group with all these other groups. And so we look at it in those eyes and think there's nothing of unity that's happening. Uh-huh. Yes, there is. Unity of the faith. We may not see eye to eye on every little thing. It's a unity of the faith. The common faith is Jesus Christ is Lord. Number two, what does that mean? He, a sinless life, that gift from God was given among men so that he laid down his life, the lamb slain before the foundations of the world. We believe then in his life, his death, burial, and resurrection. There are just basic tenets of faith. And people that believe in that, I'm going to call them a brother or a sister. They can have some sideline issues, and I could really get off, and I could sit there and go like this and, and, and gnarly about all kind of stuff. I don't need to do that. I said, and if they get all up, worked up, well, what about, what about? I said, I got a question for you. Do you love Jesus like I do? Well, I don't know. Or, I mean, if they get keep tipping the cart, I'll say, well, if you believe that he died, was buried, and rose from the dead on the third day, yes. ascended to heaven, and he's coming back for all of us. Do you believe that? They go, well, yeah. I said, congratulations, brother. We're in the same family. What do you mean? Well, yeah, that's, that makes, it's as simple as it gets. I mean, there are some other, you know, I, I don't have to go to all those things. I told a lady yesterday who I know has a strange, and I'll say it strange in a polite way, a strange Catholic or uh, smatterings of Catholicism that are kind of a little different, okay? I won't go into the details, but as we were talking, I heard all these things, and something about saints and canonization and all this. But I said, you know, the beautiful thing is, and I just jumped right in, and I said, when Paul wrote to different churches, like Ephesus or different places, he'd write to all of them, of course, and right at the beginning, he would say that he was writing to the saints, I said, for some reason, he must have thought all of them were saints. The whole lot of them. And then he'd write to another church over here, and he'd call them saints. Well, how many saints does God need? I mean, he's, before they had, before the church had saints, God was calling them all saints. And I read that when I was a baby Christian. You know what? And I looked at her, I said, you know what? If you, if you believe God and you, you love God, I'm looking at a saint. My gosh. No, I didn't do that. I mean, I didn't, you know. I mean, that is the truth. Do, do you, yeah. We, we talk for 20 minutes. Yeah, probably a good 20 minutes. And see, this goes back to the beginning in John 17. Not only will people know through our unity, that God sent Jesus for us. The just for the unjust, holy for the unholy, the, you know, we could go through what Romans talks about. And here we are, the recipient of all this wonderful stuff from him. I call it stuff, I shouldn't. This wonderful, these wonderful blessings of the covenant. The bought and paid for. Not only the penalty removed, but the power of it broken. All this, all this. <laughs> no wonder Moses said, that's evil tidings if you're not going with us. <laughs> that's not a good idea. God wants to be with us. He wants us to be in unity like the Father is in the Son and the Son. Then the world will know that God sent Jesus and, someone read me the and. There's two things that happen when, when this starts working and
Everybody's waiting for it to come up on the... No, <laughs> I'll tell you. Want me to tell you? Does someone know what it is without looking? And, and of course, I'm looking at it because I, I had to prepare for... <laughs> but not only does this happen across the world and in the eyes and minds of people, but the revelation comes that it's like the saint message that he, the Father, loves them, meaning all those who would believe, that they would know that you love them just as you love me. Now think about that last part. What's that mean? I mentioned that to Lynn this morning. I said, sit down and think about this. And I told her that. And she looked around, looked back this way, and took a while for her to look back up. And I said, yeah, that's true. Because I asked her, I said, do you, right now, in this moment of time, I said, she said, I was hot, I was all plugged in. I said, then five minutes later, I said, now, you're on the hot seat. You, made, you got this <laughs> hooked up for now. Now I'm going to hook you up. I said, sit down. And I said, this is just a fourth service. I'm going to embarrass her real good here. But I said, sitting here right now, with all your life and all this happened up to this point. Sitting here right now, can you tell me in full confidence that you know Jesus loves you, or God, uh, God the Father loves you just as much and just like Jesus? That his love for you is identical, same level, same. Now, of course, Jesus is Lord. We're not talking about that. We're talking about his love for, one and, for people that he's redeemed. And that he's calling. His, the Father's love for us is no different than his love for Jesus. I don't know about you, but that just, that always, I come back and I go, are you kidding me? <laughs> how, how is that possible? But he, but he does. He loves us. It's the same level. So never can we have a bad day. If you're having the worst day ever, nothing is going right. Every tire is flat, not just one. Or whatever is a bad day to you, we can say, well, one thing's for sure. I know God loves me just as much as he loves Jesus. <sighs> and then that makes my day. Fair enough? I mean, I, I can run with that. I can run with that. If we speak the truth in love, we will grow up, and this is, is uh, going on down to verse 15 of Ephesians 4, after the unity of the faith, the knowledge, Son of God, to a perfect man, the measure, the stature, of fullness of Christ. Of course, that's going to keep us from being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined, knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share. And that's what we're seeing. Causes growth in the body for the edifying of itself in love. Brothers and sisters, that's where we're headed. That's, that's what's going on. And that's why we're seeing what we're seeing. And for some reason, the love that you showed to this community by your outreach drew 100 plus people. I did, that they didn't just read a card because most of them had personal contact. So thank you. On behalf of the work of the kingdom and, and what you're doing by showing that love, um, that's exciting. That's exciting. So let me just prepare you. There will be coming days where we're going to have to dismiss uh, Rachel, Nephra, Lynn, and different ones to take care of some kiddos that will start coming in, you know, and uh, I think at one time someone said they had VBS here, you know, and th so there's other things that might be in the works, you know. But as others come in and are raised up, they're going to be filling in some gaps too and helping, you know, because they're blessed and they want to be a part. I don't know about you, but when you got born again, didn't you want to do something? I mean, I mean, I was, I was, in fact, what, I just thought of this. What happened to me when I repented, I was sitting in a house, an apartment off campus, I had never been in this building in my life. Now here I was, a sophomore, 
in college. You think college kids, they're getting educated. They're halfway smart at least. Oh gosh, this is an embarrassment. Okay, so after I'd been nagged on, I, no, I wasn't nagging, but I had believers say, hey, there's Tuesday nights, there's this prayer or, or this gathering. They always get together and we pray for each other. Come to this little thing over on 4th Street. You know, they gave me the apartment number. So kept putting it off for about a month. And one night I was walking home. I got all my studies done. I was walking back to my off-campus housing. And I got about halfway there. I was walking across this quad area, open uh, area between all these buildings, the grassy lawn. And I'm about halfway home, and I look over to my left, and I know that's the address somewhere right over there on the next street is where. And I thought, you know, it's Tuesday night. Oh, I'm going to go on home. I'm tired. And I took about another 10 steps or so, and I thought, well, I don't have any books with me, so I don't have to. I mean, I could go. I don't have to take them home and come back. I was arguing with myself. So anyway, make it a little shorter, I ended up thinking, well, I'll get this and I'll be done, you know, I'll just get it scratched off my list. I was going to do them the honor of my presence. I mean, you don't want to tell yourself that, but I was going to make sure that, it, then I could say the next day or two or someone asked me, oh, I've been there, yeah, I, oh, I went, yeah, I, you know, so maybe they would leave me alone or something. You know, the unrenewed mind just has all this critical stuff all the time. You get critical thoughts going on, you know what to do with them. I hope by now just can that stuff, just lickety-split. Just don't, don't even entertain a bunch of hooey. So I'm going, and I talk myself into going. And I, I go, and it's, of course, second floor. It's like 216 or whatever the apartment, second floor. So I go in, walk up through the stairwell. I get up to the second floor, and I go over. I'm looking at the door, and I get ready to knock, and literally, the landing is about like as wide as this here, about a square like this. I'm ready to knock on the door. I'm standing there for the longest time, and I'm looking, and I thought, what in the world are all these shoes doing here? There were, I mean, it was almost three feet. I know it was over two. It was like this deep of shoes. And here is my educated sophomore college mind reasoning what this is. Oh, that's nice. Nice of these people, these Christians. They've made a collection. And they're going to gift these to a Goodwill or to a, a ministry, you know, that's they're collecting shoes. I really thought that, that someone was... had saving up, you know, to donate them to some ministry, to the, to the poor or the infirmed or something. I don't know. I really, that's, so I timidly go ahead and knock on the door. I know I'm late. It's like 30, 40 minutes after. It was like probably quarter till eight, you know, or something started at seven. And then the door comes open about six inches, and I hear like prayers and people talking and uh, like that. And it comes up a little bit, and I start to walk in, and I stop. And, it's a, and some head pokes around, oh, just a minute, just a minute, give us a minute here. I go, what? He said, uh, okay, hey, can you guys, can you guys? Packed to the door, bodies wedged in there. They had, it took me about another minute before they could get the door open enough for me to get in. And so I come through the door, and I'm going, what in the world? And it didn't hit me till about 10 minutes later when I, I had to go into the kitchen, down the hall, and into the kitchen, and I sat in front of the kitchen sink on the floor. Every room, even back in the bedrooms and hallways, there were people. They were sitting on the edge of beds back in there in the two-room apartment. The living room was packed out. They had a couch, and someone was sitting on the floor, and someone sitting like Pam is here, and someone straddling her with legs on each side on the top uh, seriously, it was like everything was three, 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 three. There was no room. There was no room. Hot than a firecracker in there. Whew! Because, you know, all the oxygen was sucked out of the room. And I was, they'd been praying and worshiping God and singing. I, what on earth? And it didn't hit me till I sat down and hear them singing. And going, this is wild. What in the world? And I thought, oh, that's what those shoes <laughs> took me. I really thought they were taking a collection. And it belonged to all those people. 
And they're in there. I know. Do you want to hear this little thing? I, I, I promise I won't go much longer. But the whole thing of it was, it's my first time I really felt conviction. Because I saw the unity. I saw their love for one another as well as their love for God. Of course, I heard one of the main pushers on campus. I recognized his voice. I went, that's James. That's James. My gosh, what's wrong with him? He was weeping, crying, begging them for forgiveness. All the people that he had taken down the wrong path. He had, a week before, had repented, wanted to come to this meeting, and he just openly just said, I'm so sorry. And all this was going on within the next... Less than a month, in about two weeks, 500 people, it was written about, 500 came to Christ on that campus, just kind of a God thing. Papers started being written about it. I got, I was part of that number, didn't know it. You know, I didn't, <laughs> because I sat there uh, in front of the kitchen sink and just, you know, knew that I was guilty. I thought, I, and I didn't know what to do for sure, and I said, God, I just, where do you start? You don't know where to start. Am I supposed, I thought, do I list everything? Where would I start? <sighs> There's too much to list. I said, you're just going to have to, like, figure this out. I said, I, I don't know what to do, but I'm, when I said I'm sorry, that's all it took. I'm sorry. And I always tell it this way. It's like I was just talking into the air. And no one's talked to me at the time. I was hearing all this other go on, and I'm just sitting there having my own little thing. And I said, I'm sorry. And from like light years away, until that time, it was just, I was just talking. It was like, <sighs> boom. Some, I could almost like feel something from out beyond me come near me. And then I knew whatever that was went in me. That was weird. <laughs> I was, as a 19-year-old, I'm going, whoa. And to my point, first thing I want to do, what can I do? I want to, and I thought, I was raised in a Christian church that believed in water baptism. I was been baptized when I was 12. I thought, you know what? I didn't understand that phrase, you know, about going in, getting baptized, and, you know, went in a, wet center and just came out of, went in a dry center and came out of wet center because I hadn't really repented. So what I did know, though, is you're supposed to be baptized. So that night in Lake Charleston, I heard someone was taking a car load out and a couple people were getting baptized. I figured a way to get a ride, run home, get a, a towel or two, and f hitch a ride and go out there. And about midnight that night, got baptized the same night I got born again because of what we're talking about here. This unity that was happening that just draws people and that will create the miraculous because God wants to tie us all together in seeing these miraculous things. So we're going to keep seeing it. Amen? Amen. 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 And uh, may, may God bless every effort. May God bless your life with, with health, with healing, with strength, with uh, the knowledge of the goodness of God so that everything that we say, if we're smacked the wrong way like a sponge filled with good stuff, that all the good juice comes out. There's nothing ugly that we've housed.